my name is Dr. Jordan Whitley. I'm a human and animal chiropractor, and today we're going to be talking about how I work on horses. In general, most horses uh, need a wide variety of different adjustments, but we check everything like we do, do with a dog or a human. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the thoracic, cervical, lumbar, pelvic, jaw, front fore ends, back ends, uh, tail. So every animal that we work on is different, but horses have to carry weight. So a person riding on a horse is gonna cause more weight in certain areas of that horse's spine. So I may have to check different areas like their pelvis or their lower lumbar area more in one type of horse that does a certain job or another type of horse. And because of their different jobs, they're all gonna have different issues. So a horse that does a lot of barrels is gonna have more shoulder issues. A horse that jumps is also gonna have more shoulder issues and lower back potential issues. Uh, we have a lot of animals that don't want to do something because they know it's going to elicit pain. So if we can take that pain away by making an adjustment, then they're able to function better. So what I do is I check for side to side motion, I check for forward and back motion, and what I do is I adjust left or right, forward or backward, to, to basically put motion back into that joint the way it's supposed to be. Whenever I first come up on a horse, uh, one, I take the history from the owner. Hey, the horse doesn't want to do this. It doesn't want to do this. On this barrel, we're having a problem making this left or right hand turn. So what I'll do is I'll kind of coerce the animal to do what I want it to do. Um, I can take its head and I can bring it over to the, its side to put it through its normal range of motion, just as us turning left or right. And if it doesn't want to do that, then I know there's a problem there. We have a lot of horses that come in that are uh, not able to make hard left turns or right turns. We find out that a shoulder issue caused a lot of tension up into the neck, which eventually caused a jaw issue. So whenever I work on a horse's jaw, uh, what I'm doing is I'm checking for that motion from side to side. For us, we normally chew forward and backward, whereas uh, a horse will move from side to side. That's going to cause a stiffness on one side or the other. I'll be checking areas of their tail because if their tail is off just a little bit, it's gonna cause a twist in their pelvis, which is gonna make their entire spine off. Now, what'll happen a lot of times is we'll work on the pelvis. There's a ton of tension on the back end. What we do is whenever I'm pulling on that tail, I'm, I'm allowing traction in each one of those joints in the lower back. And then sometimes they get traction all the way up where I'm leaning back and they're pulling as far as they can. And we're just separating those joints little by little, just giving them some relief. And a lot of times as I'm doing that, you're going to see the horse's head shift left or right. Sometimes they're looking around going, what are you doing back there? But sometimes they're trying to move their head around because it feels good. It's like if somebody was poking on a little spot in your back and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to move my neck around to get more motion into that area or to really stretch that muscle. What I'll do is sometimes I look at an animal's posture. So I'll look in and I'll look and see if there is a deformity on one side or the other. And by deformity, I mean that the muscle is larger on one side versus the other. Or maybe there is a small tilt in the spine if I'm looking down their back. Maybe their spine kind of curves off to one side or one side is tilted higher than the other one, or there's more muscle mass. So whenever I'm checking an animal's spine and you see me put my hand on its spine, what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if the muscle tone on one side or the other is more tonic or, or tighter than the other. So I can go, okay, this isn't moving this way, so I need to move it in that direction. A lot of times I'm also feeling for heat. So anytime you have inflammation, you're gonna have more blood flow. Then whenever I get into the back legs, again, every joint has a range of motion it has to go through. But what I'll do is I'll try to make sure that each one of those joints is moving so that the knee can move like it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, I just get a little nudge to get it through that range of motion to make it move as it's supposed to. It doesn't take much depending on the joint. Sometimes like the shoulder joint, it does take a lot more force because these horses are very large and they have all of their weight. Let's say we take a newborn, a newborn calf or, or a newborn foal, uh, you know, a baby horse. I can put motion through that joint without having to do very much. I can just kind of lean into it and get that thing moving. I don't just walk up and waylay a bunch of force onto an animal that has a ton of um, arthritis. What I'm doing is I'm working slowly into those joints. So I'll put a little bit of force and I increase that force gradually depending on the amount of arthritis or wear and tear on that joint. So whenever you hear that cracking sound during an adjustment, normally it's nitrogen that is leaving the, leaving the joint. Uh, it's not necessarily needed for an adjustment, but it's always really, really satisfying for us. Whenever I'm working, uh, I don't really necessarily need an assistant, but what I do need is I need somebody to be able to hold the horse. So I have this big styrofoam block uh, that's like an aircraft foam that I use to stand on, but I also use it in a, in a way that blocks me from the animal. Let's say I need to work on the horse's back end. Uh, I do this little technique where I'll use either a key or I'll use kind of something a little bit uh, pointed 
and I'll rub it down their butt to cause them to to uh, basically do a cat stretch. But what that does, it opens all the joints up. But whenever I do that, sometimes I can irritate the animal. And so I need to have that block in between me and them in case they were to kick me. Whenever I'm working on an animal, uh, I have to cue in body signals. I'm checking their eyes to see if they're really flighty. If they are looking for their exit, um, I know that this animal is going to be uh, a lot harder to work on until the horse's ears are pinned back. Uh, it's angry with me, or, or if it's not listening for what's behind it, it's, it's upset with me in some way. As soon as I make the adjustment, then they chill out. But a lot of times whenever I'm working on an animal, I'll see that uh, they're licking and chewing or their eyes get really heavy. They're getting an endorphin release. I also do little things that people may or may not catch for safety. Um, the way I walk around a horse, the way I am patting their leg as I'm going down to reach for it. Because I know that if I'm patting the leg and it's causing irritation on the horse, that that horse is mad at me or they are ready to kick me and I need something in the way or it's something where I go, hey, I'm not working on this today. I'll work on it next time I see you. I love working on animals. I love working on people and being able to combine the two has been able to open the world uh, or open the doors to a world that a lot of people have never seen before.